Hey, it's Joe Gleisman Automator, and you're about to see a little bit from a team meeting we were on where we were working with the UIA object, and it's just a bit hairy in different ways you can connect to the object and see what's under the mouse and connect to different things from a handle and from whatnot, a lot of different ways. So Isaias is walking us through some of the methodologies that he uses. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you like it, please like the video. It really helps us out. We do have a course on objects, and we don't have one on UIA yet because UIA is very complicated, but in order to use UIA, you need to understand objects. So I'll put the link up here. Remember, it comes with a double your money back guarantee. Uh, all the videos are usually three to like five to nine minutes, somewhere in there. They're pretty short and concise and give you a nice clear path for learning auto hunting. So hope you enjoy the video. Cheers. So anyway, we were um, <laughs> discussing UIA and some tips on connecting to UIA and different different things. Right. So, ahead, now, most of the times, like 99% of the time, we use the element from Handle which means that we give it right. a window WND, uh, HWND uh, from is, if window is active or if window exists. And it gives me the full element of that full tree, right? For, for that program. And yes. we could do the same with element from window, which means the one from element from handle, I could give it the handle to a list view, for example, and not the full program, for example, if I wanted to. Um, the element from window, I give it a window title, it gets the whole thing. But we could go ahead and get the element that is under the mouse, only that one thing, which means it would be easier for us to um, loop through objects and stuff like that, because that way we don't get the full tree of the whole program. We don't get thousands of elements. We can get the elements under the current mouse, which just gave me the idea, Irfan, maybe that script should be highlighting which element your mouse is under because that way i can choose whether to get that one thing or just the whole tree you understand example. what you're grabbing yeah right oh, yeah. so because when you hit f1 it just selects one oh maybe that's not the one that i wanted you know maybe it should be highlighting as i go but that's another thing yeah. but that's the cool thing you can tell what is under your mouse but interestingly i saw this guy and i was like smallest element from point so that it was like, if I hover over a text, right? It could be a button and inside that button, there is a text element. You see what I mean? So yes. this probably gets me the smallest one, like the, the last child of that thing. Maybe that's what it does. And then answering Joe's question, we could get the focused element at a given time. So I just point at a window or I don't even have to point at a window. I just call that and it would give me the element that is focused at the moment or that is active at the moment, which might be exactly the one that I want or not, depending on the situation. Actually, so. actually there is only one focused element because we right. have one mouse pointer. <laughs> well, not not mouse, and that's why it's actually, important. It's actually, the keyboard actually, focus. Yeah, yeah, you can say it's a user input. So yeah, you user can input in a one field at a time. So right, yeah, but that's that's the, that's the that's a key difference. If your mouse is over a button, it doesn't make that button focused. Yeah. Okay, so just just be careful with that. If any of you guys are gonna use this right now in in this example, if I uh, right now I have I can type in this control right here. But yeah. if I hover over this one here, yeah, it is my not focused. focus control is still the edit field above. So just be careful with that. If I want to make the button the focus control, I have to press tab until it actually reaches that control, if I remember right. So you should So be it's able monitoring to... the carrot? Is that not the carrot? Is what what control has um what control you can input keyboard things into it. So right now the yep. run control kind of set an enter key to be run, right? So if you cannot send keyboard input to a control, it is not focused. So, uh, let That's me, what it means. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me restate them. So to, to help explain it. The both the carrot and the outline of the buttons is what's helping you realize what's focused. Is that right? right? Yes. yes. So right now the edit field up here doesn't have a carrot because it doesn't have focus on it. I know that the drop-down list is the one that is taking input from the button, not because of the blue outline, because the blue outline is just where my mouse is located. But right now, even though my mouse is over the run button, 
the one that has the focus is the Unicode on the left. And if yes. I press up and down, you see that now I can move that because that one is receiving keyboard input. So whenever, and, and this is true in Auto Hotkey as well, whenever you're talking about a focused element, you're talking about the element in which you can input keyboard things, not mouse things. So well, and that's just, what threw me because that's yeah. why I thought of the carrot, right? But right. anyway, I still get your point. Okay. Right, right. So in the end, um, those functions are available and you would use them depending on what you want to do. We usually use the element from handle and we just give it a window and then we get thousands of elements. Maybe you don't need that. And for, for if you need performance, maybe you should get the element from a given point or get the focused element. Maybe that would speed up your script way much more than getting the handle and finding the element yourself, you know? But it, it helped me understand this is this, because the either the 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 get focused element or small or whatever, wouldn't it still have to traverse some sort of a tree to to find that? Yes. Now here's the difference. UIA is written in a language which is really fast. Oh. When they search and give you the focus element, it's extremely fast. If you get the element from handle, now you have to create the loop in auto hotkey script, and the loop in auto hotkey is slower ah, than. See, that. that's really interesting. That I right. never. Okay, that that's so, a, so that is the reason ah, why you would do right, that. And right. basically, the reason why, if you're going to get an element from handle, give it the handle of not the so, full program, but just the part that you want. That's very interesting because. Even though we don't like doing things generally like image search stuff and coordinates. However, if you can force coordinates on a given program, you could greatly speed up what you're doing, right? Like I, I get right. that. That's very interesting. Right. Yeah. And the fact that we, we and, and depending on whether you want something dynamically being pulled up, like the element under the mouse, and yeah, you're going to be moving sure. the mouse around. Yeah, that's a whole so different you got like a right. discovery tool or something, right? Right, exactly. Those kind of th there are certain situations in which you want that, right? But I would say, if you're going to do the element from handle, give it the handle to the control that you want to traverse. So, for example, from here, I don't want the full program. I just want to find something in this list view. Right. Then give it the handle to the list view, which you can do. And right. at that point, it will give you the tree just for the list view. And not the full program. It would speed up your your process very a lot. So that's basically what I would suggest. And it's good to know that those are there. The thing is, um, we were talking about this because we we were asking, hey, can we get the element under the mouse? Yeah, we can. There are functions for that. Cool. Thanks.